idling. Engine takeover, idling, whatever you want to call it. I know I'm a bit low on the old cord in there. Now I've done a few videos on this before about uh, idling and tick over whatever because a lot of people seem to think that it's bad for the engine but in a minute this one's going to turn off I've got the key here so in a minute it'll turn off and then we can have a there we go now that's turned off and that noise is gone we can have a little chat about it because a lot of people seem to think that when an engine's on tick over one person once said to me, when the engine's on tick over, it's working harder and there's a lot more stress on the engine. Well, I can't see why at all there will be any more stress on the engine because it's just ticking over, you know. It's, a, it's, a, it's lowest RPM, probably. It probably could go a little bit lower, but it's nearly at its lowest RPM that it could go at without sort of, um, you know, stalling. And it's just, you know, if it's got an ECU, the ECU's just keeping it ticking over, just putting in enough fuel and enough air for it just to just to tick over. And if it's carb carb carbureted or if it's diesel, it's the same sort of thing. Now, someone also said to me that when an engine's on tick over, the oil pump isn't pumping enough oil around the engine. And if you leave it ticking over for too long, you'll start to damage parts of the engine because it ain't getting enough oil. Now, that's a load of rubbish. Because, when you think about it, nobody would make an engine with an oil pump that isn't sufficient enough to pump enough oil around the engine at all times. I mean, obviously, when the engine's on tick over, there's less oil pressure because the oil pump is driven by, in most cases, a chain down in the sump that comes off of the crank and it's driven by a chain with uh, sprockets that are geared the right, you know, obviously the manufacturers do experiments and testing the, the right gearing to pump, to turn the oil pump sufficiently enough on tick over just to keep the oil pump in and to keep everything lubricated and then when the engine's revved up the pressure builds up, you get more oil pressure because you need more oil pressure because the engine's going faster RPM so you need more oil pressure to, to lubricate the bearings and other parts so the idea that with the correct oil pump anyway and a fully functioning oilway system and fully functioning oil pump and the correct oil good maintained engine the idea that when the engine's on tick over there's not enough the pump the oil pump isn't pumping enough oil around to the top of the engine and other parts is a load of rubbish um, anyone who thinks that if someone can prove me otherwise there might be engines out there that have to be but you know what I mean it's 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 a load of rubbish because no manufacturer would make an oil an engine with an oil pump that's not sufficient enough as long as it's working correctly um, so you can leave your engine ticking over for as long as you like I mean in the cold countries like Alaska and other countries like that they leave all their plant machinery and probably trucks and vehicles running all the time. You have to leave them ticking over overnight, and obviously you you know you don't turn them off because they freeze within an hour. If it's diesel, it'll freeze. Petrol will as well start to crystallise in the lines, and also because it's so cold, your engine won't start very well, and it'll be a big disaster again afterwards. So they leave all their plant machinery running 24 hours a day for the whole season. Now. If their oil pumps weren't pumping enough oil, then the engines would be damaged and seize up fairly quick, wouldn't they? Think of it that way. Now the only other, the only downside to it, leaving an engine ticking over for too long, is obviously if it hasn't got a sufficient cooling system. There's no air getting in the radiator. Uh, well, yeah, there's no air getting in the radiator, is there? So it's just going to get hot. That's why you need a good fan. If you've got a good fan, if you've got a good fan that comes on at the right time and keeps uh, going through the radiator to keep your engine cool while it's ticking over you're okay, you've got that bit sorted so it's not going to overheat and the other downside to leaving an engine ticking over for too long over a very long period of time and I'm talking a long period of time I'm not talking about just a you know a little while here and there I'm talking about if it's like 10 years of ticking over for 6 hours a day for example and then that engine is not going to have as much power as it would have 
when it come out of the factory. So for example, it might be supposed to be 200 brake, but it will be maybe 160 or something or 170 because it's got used to ticking over for a long period of time. For an engine to stay healthy and to be uh, to keep its you know to maintain the engine, you need to you need to work it. You need to give it a load, and you need to just do a vary of different RPMs. You know, make sure it gets a good full load every now and again, quite often. You know, just to just to keep it going. For example, if you was to if you was to get, for example, let's say a generator engine, right? A generator, you've got two identical generator engines. And you, one of them is on a, one of them is powering a generator on a light load for five years. And the other one goes into something, let's say this engine goes into a tractor. For example, it goes into a tractor and it spends five years being under heavy loads, pulling things, plowing, whatever. And then you take both these engines out of their applications and put them on a dyno. I guarantee you the one that was in the track doing the hard work will be more reliable and will keep its power better than the one that was just sitting doing 1500 RPM on a light load of a generator. I guarantee that and I'd love to see an experiment of that. If I ever get the chance I'll do an experiment and we'll see. But yeah man, that's just a quick one on idling and ticking over because it still seems to be, I know not everyone watches my videos but it still seems to be that a lot of people don't actually understand how engines work and you know what goes on inside an engine and you know how to maintain the engine and how to keep it you know how to keep it under successful sort of maintenance and we've got a nice what's that that must be like I don't know I can't see some kind of Harley Davidson or something just went past but there you go um, Hopefully that's cleared up a few things with, with leaving an engine ticking over. you just got to make sure it's got enough air going through. If it's air-cooled, make sure it's um, got enough air going through the fins on the on the right, the cooling fins on the um, cylinder block. And if it's got a radiator, make sure there's enough water, um, air going through the water, through the fins in the radiator. Now you can hear that motorbike. As long as you, as long as you keep it from overheating, you've got plenty of oil in it, and it will just, it can just let it tick over for for a while. There's no problems there at all. It's, the oil pump is going to keep pumping, and it will keep it all sufficient, as long as you've got the correct oil and a fully functional oil waste system and a fully functional oil pump. No problems at all. One thing that you do have to keep in mind, though, is, for example, if you know where your oil pickup is, because it will either be in the middle of your sump. On the left or the right of your sump, or it might be you got. You no, know, if you know where it is, it could be anywhere in any anywhere in the sump. Or engines are different. Now, even if you've got the correct amount of order in it, if you park it on a, if you park your vehicle on a slant or a hill facing up, down, left or right, and all the oil has gone to one side, right? If you've parked it there or you're sitting there ticking over, and all the oil has gone to one side, so if you park it and the oil goes to this side, and your engine, your pickup's this side and the oil is here, it's all backed up to here, yeah? So this is all empty here. It's not gonna pick up the oil, is it? So you need to think, if you park your car on a slant, or an angle, or a hill, you know, where is the oil gonna be when you start it up? Or if you're sitting there, you know? When you start it up in the morning, if you park it on a hill for the night, and you park it so you're facing frontwards down the hill, so you're like that, facing frontwards down the hill, yeah? and your oil pickup is at the bottom, uh, sorry, the back of your engine, and you're at the back, all your oil is going to come to the front overnight. So when you start it up in the morning, there is a chance that it might not pick that up, and your engine's going to be running dry from cold. Or it's less likely that way, but it's more likely left or right, because there's more space for it to go. Now I realise some sumps are designed in a way that that won't happen, but you don't know, do you? It's best to be safer than sorry. So that's another thing to keep in mind and think about when you're, you know, man, you know, driving and maintaining your your vehicles or whatever you got. I always like to think about that. You see people at work, you know, they park their machines on a hill. You always see it on the on the motorway roadworks, where 
there's people on the, on the uh, motorway road, road works. They park their diggers and the things up on the up on the gradient. And you know, you think in the morning, how are they going to check the oil to start with? Because it's on a you cannot get yeah to check an oil level, it has to be on a flat surface. It's as simple as that. It has to be flat. Otherwise, you ain't going to get a good a true reading on the oil on the dips digger. And number two, where's the oil pickup? They're going to start it up in the morning, then it's going to run dry. Who knows? So it's just something else to think about when you you know think about your oil when you're when you're parking your car or whatever it is you're parking. So that's uh I've just cleared that up for some of you lot. One thing I've got to do with this, it's got well I done a head gasket test and there's no fumes in that water. Everything's okay, but it does use some coolant. So and there ain't a leak, but it does use some. So it's going somewhere. It probably has got a head gasket leak, but it's just not putting any fumes in there. You know, the little tester you put in there, you suck up the water and it tells you what it's like, you know. You have a head gasket failure or whatever. It's all right. But that's another day. It's coming up to winter now. I won't be driving this car very much in the winter. So there we go, my friends. Now you know all about ticking over.